What I wanted to uh, underline is the fact that these prints, uh, with all the landscape uh, around the uh, architecture, are true architectural surveys. These have the flatness of uh, front elevation set in a context, but uh, they can be studied as uh, architectural drawings, architectural renderings uh, as well. Um, So Vasi and Piranesi worked in this tradition, and uh, as Falda, Specchi, Vasi, and in Florence, Giuseppe Zocchi, who published a series of views of Florence and views of uh, the villas of Florence, uh, have all this uh, kind uh, of, of approach. In 1741, Giuseppe Vasi is already known as a nature speciali specializing in architecture, as recorded by Francesco Vettori, in a list published in, uh, in that year of printmakers active in Rome divided into categories that make us understand how highly specialized the work of printmaking was at that time. Um, at the same time, Algarotti and Bottari lamented a lack of specialization. And I quote, we have few etchers and engravers in Italy, that's quite surprising, not only nowadays, that is at the middle of the 18th century, and most of all, we lack those specializing in architecture. Vasi and Piranesi's interest in 16th and 17th century architectural prints is developed further through their collaboration with Nolli. Uh, in the scientific survey of ancient and modern Rome, you see, uh, even one of the most spectacular uh, views of Rome, the, the Colosseum taken from above uh, by Piranesi, uh, perhaps loans has something to do with Falda's representation of, uh, uh, of uh, in his map of Rome. Um, this is to show how Piranesi, of course, looked back to a, a glorious tradition of uh, uh, production of prints and, and maps of Rome. But, of course, uh, Piranesi's and Nolli's work with Nolli was eventually uh, a very important experience for, uh, for, 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 for him, uh, an experience that can be seen as a turning point and will shape Piranesi's and Vazi's uh, future production. And some of Nolli's patrons, and here is a, um, a three images, one, uh, bottom uh, 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 right is Piranesi, um, then we have Nolio, who is the Colosseum, but here on the left is uh, Carlo Fontana's representation survey of the, of the, uh, of the Colosseum. Um, some of Nolio's patrons, from Giovanni Gaetano Bottari to Giuseppe Bianchini, were behind the thriving activity, this thriving activity in Rome. They supported intellectually and promoted such ambitious programs of documenting the art and architecture of ancient and modern Rome. In what they felt, it was a critical point in the life of the city. Inclusions and omissions in the subjects of prints of Vasi and Piranesi are part of these multifaceted programs. I'm particularly fond of a tiny sketch by... Oh, there we are. By Piranesi, in one of his Modena sketchbooks, with studies of his vedute. Just very quick sketches uh, that will turn into uh, two of his large vedute. Uh, but he writes a very short sentence up there and I won't read it in Italian. Uh, Piranesi wrote uh, with very bad handwriting, uh, and often he got so confused that they're not proper sentences, they're just thoughts uh, um, without any syntax. But the sense of it is, e gli antichi uh, non ebbe la stampa. The ancient Romans did not have printmaking, they didn't know how to print, and that is why their civilization has got lost. But <laughs> we have. Uh, we have, uh, 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 we know how to print, how to record buildings with printing. So, li moderni hanno trovato delle cose più importanti. So, we moderns have found more important things, and it's quite an astonishing position for for what we know of Piranesi's in, in 
intellectual uh, role. And then he ends up with a funny thing, skeletons, mm -hmm. as they are. Who are skeletons? We don't know. Probably the ruins of Rome, uh, which is going, he is going to document through his prints. But I find it a very touching uh, thought of a printmaker about his art and all the uh, proud of being uh, a modern instead of uh, an ancient Roman uh, who did not you know how to print. Grasso's Magnificenza di Roma Antica e Moderna started being published in 1747, faithful to a thematic program from beginning to end in 1761. It is a very ambitious work, integrating <coughs> images and texts, analyzing scientifically every aspect of Rome as in a sort of encyclopedia, summed up in the celebrated Prospetto, published in, 16, in 1765, but conceived as an, and already advertised 20 years before. Then, in the guidebook of 1763, and again in Basi's final work, the indeed rather nostalgic, and here Jessica Mayer will uh, excuse me if I use this word, but I'm looking forward to hearing her uh, lecture this afternoon. Uh, the Nostalgic Pianta di Roma. Vasi's texts, and this is interesting, were written by Giuseppe Bianchini and Orazio Orlandi. Both of them, both these intellectuals, uh, were involved in knowledge program of survey and, and the encyclopedia and, and the encyclopedic book. They should have accompanied the plan, though eventually the book was, ne was never published. Orlandi, uh, a well-known scholar and antiquarian at that time in Rome, eventually became one of Piranesi's ghost writers. So we can see how the three and their entourage of intellectuals helping them uh, were, uh, I mean, Rome was probably a very small place at that time, so everybody knew each other. But uh, it's interesting that such enemies could use them, uh, you know, could be helped by the same people and had friends in common. Piranesi's first set of Vedute di Roma were published around 1745-46. We could say at the same time, more or less, as Vasi's work. Piranesi's program, like Vasi's, is defined from the beginning as a series, as attested by the two inventive title plate and frontispiece. They were published with the first set of 12 Vedute. It means that they were meant to be sold together as a book. Uh, but Piranesi's program is synthetic and uh, uh, as it is evocative and provocative, we could say, not systematic, quiet, and uniform as that of Vasi. Piranesi's first 12 plates include a well balanced overview of ancient and modern Rome, set in an ideal tour from the entrance into Rome from Piazza del Popolo, then the Vatican the major basilicas, as the Lateran and Santa Maria Maggiore, then Piazza Navona, the Trevi Fountain, uh, the Pantheon, ancient and modern Rome, sacred and profane, in the thick of the Abitato, the Colosseo, and the Pyramid, celebrated landmarks in the Disabitato. The Campidoglio and the general view of the Forum from the top of the Capitol in the hill are a reminder of centuries of art and historiography from Poggio Bracciolini to Edward Gibbon, uh, in the reflection of the glories and fortunes of the ancient metropolis uh, taken from that very spot. By 1773, Piranesi's collection of vedute had grown to 135 plates, celebrated monuments, less known antiquities, very little interest to categories such as palaces, villas, small churches, monasteries, the very bulk of Piranesi's uh, in uh, visual Rome. Like Vasi with this prospetto, Piranesi feels he has to link all his views to a general frame or a sort of index or visual index. Piranesi, is publi Piranesi publishes then his Pianta di Roma e del Campo Marzio, uh, it is, 1773, sold separately but often bound together with his, with his <coughs> Veduta. But contrary to Vasi's prospective that revived the Baroque tradition of bird's eye views and panoramas, citing Tempesta and Maggi, Piranesi's plan is a deferent tribute to Nolli, deferent but highly original and innovative <coughs> at the same time. Both Vasi and Piranesi were learned artists, we know. 
well aware of the rich tradition in which they were rooted. Piranesi, besides being a scholar in his own right, writing though with the help of professional aids, books and dissertations on architecture and Roman topography, studied, copied and collected Renaissance and Baroque prints. Basil was also well read, and his production reveals all his learned loans from printmakers of the 16th and 17th centuries. And I'm closing here acknowledging um, their tribute to such tradition can help us recognize their innovative approaches, Basil's encyclopedic, uniform, and serene vision of the urban stage of modern Rome was less fortunate in, fortunate in later times when Piranesi's grand rhetoric of celebrated monuments was definitely preferred. In the late 18th century and during the Romantic period, well into the 20th century, Piranesi was the interpreter of Rome's decaying, sublime grandeur. I was surprised to learn how much Piranesi's Vedute di Roma and uh, some of other you know, of his works, such as the uh, plan of Adrian's villa at Tivoli, were influential even for a uh, modern master as Le Corbusier in his study of Roman architecture and urbanism at the beginning of the 20th century. Actually, there are sketches by Le Corbusier copying Piranesi's Vedute. He probably didn't even know who Vasi was. <laughs> So I think it is very interesting that we are here in Oregon today discussing about Vasi and 18th century Roman architecture and urbanism. There's sense in it, I think. Let's not forget that it is thanks to 20th century American uh, architects um, that Nolly has become such a key figure today. In Nolly's rendering of the 18th century city, American architects and urbanists could see how European historic towns had shaped a rich, varied, but fluid and harmonious context that did not isolate monuments from the urban fabric. Today's interest in Vasi follows, I think, in that trap. While Piranesi's dramatic rendering of ancient and modern monuments tends to isolate them, make them the decontextualized icons of magnificent architecture, the masterpiece of architecture, Vasius Rome can show us a different town where monuments and people can interact without flashings. I'd like to thank James Tice and James Harper for bringing our attention to Vasius lesson again and for such celebration of a new revival of Vasius fortunes. Thank you.